So let's talk for a little bit about managing layers. Let's look mainly here at the layers list. The layers list shows you an overview of your project, giving you a sense of the hierarchy of how the objects are organized. Now this is all based on this concept of groups and objects. And what we've got here right now is we have a group, and then we have a group within a group. This group called Back Bright Ideas 2, this was actually that imported Photoshop file, but really it's just the same thing. It's just another kind of group. And we can move that group in and out of that one group, or we can create a new group for specific objects. And why would you do this? It enables you to move certain objects around in independently. So for example, down here at the bottom of the layers list, I'm going to click the plus button. That's going to add for me a new group in the current group that I'm selected. So I was because group two was selected, it added that group in there. Let's now grab that. I'm going to drag one group inside of another. So now group three is inside of Bright Idea 2. And I'm going to take the text and put that in that group and then the little light bulb and put it in that group too and now I have this one object which is the text in the light bulb that I could turn on and off and I can manipulate I can move that around or scale it or do anything I want to it as a group now and in addition we have the little squiggly line the little the little electric pulse and the background these are now separate elements so essentially now I've simplified my project by creating that group to put those objects in I can always open the group and, and manipulate the objects individually or I can drag them out of the group I can drag that out of one group and put it back into the back bright ideas group or I can move it down here and put it in between the layer one and uh, and background there and that'll put it there take it out of that one group and put it into the other and so forth so the order and the arrangement of the objects here is completely fluid and flexible. You can organize and manipulate these as you want. You can double click this to name it. Let's just call this light bulb. And that becomes the name of that group. So that group contains the light bulb there. And again, you can take one group and move it inside or outside of another group and so forth. So now that light bulb is a separate group, completely unrelated to these other groups. And you'll see as we get into behaviors, the position of certain objects within groups does have an important element. You can determine whether you're controlling certain objects by what group they're in. And again, we'll come back to that a little bit later. Now there's other things about groups. First of all, you could apply filters or behaviors to an entire group, which is another reason to group them. And groups have their own parameters. So if I go to my inspector here, when I have a group selected, you see now the fourth tab over here, the fourth pane is called group. And there's a couple controls specifically for how that group, uh, to control that group. Now I'm not gonna talk about 2D or 3D yet. We're gonna come back to that later in another tutorial. But we can talk about this resolution issue. By, de by default, when you have a group, the group's dimensions, the size and scope of that group, are controlled by the objects within it. So actually, let's switch to this group here. This group, you see, has a fixed resolution, and that's because it came in with the Photoshop file. Look at the little preview here, though. When I turn off fixed resolution, suddenly you can see the way that those little yellow, uh, the, the yellow bar there extends beyond the edge of the group. Now those are contained within the group, the whole width of this thing. If I instead turn on the fixed resolution, go back to my group and say fixed resolution. Now this group is being limited to the size of that background object. And again, this is because this came in as a Photoshop file. It was preset with this fixed width and fixed height. I can change this. I can say make it wider to make sure it includes the yellow line, right? And or I could change the width so that it's limited that way. And so I'm taking this entire group and I'm limiting the size and scope of that group using this fixed resolution settings. And similarly, you have properties and these properties affect the group itself. So if I make a change to these things, I'm affecting the entire group, not an individual object. So the paradigm of working in groups is a really helpful one, allows you to organize your objects in really smart and effective ways.